Hi, my name is Jordan Messer. My stage name is Luna Love. I'm 27 years young. I'm a straight, transgendered woman, and my pronouns are she, her, and bitch. So early on, um, I was always gravitating towards more feminine things, toys, colors. Um, when I was five, I told my mom for Halloween I wanted to be a princess. And she went above and beyond, got me a cute little princess outfit and a wig and everything. So that was probably my, that was my first time ever dabbling in my gender identity. So I started to question my identity, I think at a really young age, at five. But I also knew it was wrong because that's what I was taught. So I definitely repressed that side of me for years. Um, going into high school, I, I dated a female for four years because I thought, I'm just going to make it work. Um, and in that relationship, I really found that there's more of my onion that I need to peel back. So we broke up. And then from after high school, so what was that, like 18, 19, I started really focusing on who I was and dealing with my demons that I haven't faced. And that's when I started performing drag in Phoenix which I always make a joke that it was like the gateway drug from doing drag to transitioning. Um, but yeah, 18, I'd say. I was obsessed with this TV show called RuPaul's Drag Race, which a friend put me onto. And prior to that, I didn't even realize female illusionment was a job. I didn't even realize trans people really existed because all I had was the media, you know, showing me this side of trans people that isn't accurate at all. They just used it as the butt of the joke. So it was season two of Drag Race and it was the um, finale of the show and they had all the cast on and there was one contestant who came out as trans and she was my favorite contestant. And then to see someone have a similar storyline to me really resonated in me. And actually we're best friends right now, which is so cool to me that I met the first trans woman I've ever seen on TV. So my favorite memory since transitioning, I think, is probably just the support of my family, especially my mom. You know, she struggled with pronouns for a while, which I understand because two decades I lived as one person. Um, she went to Mexico with me and took care of me while I got a bunch of surgeries and just having her support always, no matter what, just really means a lot. You don't realize how much family means, especially your mom, until you go through something crazy like this. So having her support and just knowing I have her love all the time is probably one of my favorite memories. So the first time ever cross-dressing, I was five. Um, growing up, I always played house with my brother and like my cousins and I was always the mom, you know, with toys and like games and stuff. I was always the female character. But fast forward, Halloween came around again. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it again. So I got a cool costume, a look together. And that's when I finally realized like, this is you girl, like you gotta start living authentically. So Halloween, gateway holiday. So my first makeup item I remember wearing is back to my mom. I would she'd be at work and I'd go into her bathroom, she had this red lipstick and she had this really ugly blue like shimmer eyeshadow. So I would just wear that until she would come home from work and I would wipe it off. So coming out was an interesting journey for me. I was a straight male for two decades, I dated a female. Um, after I graduated high school, I realized, girl, the gig is up. So I identified as a gay man for four years. And in that time, I started performing drag and drag kind of opened my eyes to so many different people and gender identities. Come across a lot of trans performers and I would pick their brains and ask them so many questions. And I, I knew I was trans for the longest time, but like that first step, like actually acknowledging it is really hard. So I had a girlfriend named Gia who I told first. She always supported me, but it took me probably like three years after that to finally start my journey. Um, my mom I told a year prior to my medical transition because I just wanted it to kind of sit in her brain like this is gonna happen. That was December and then the following December I finally went through with it. My friends have adjusted pretty well to pronouns. I think family was the main issue. Um, like I said, it's hard to be friends with someone for a, a decade plus and then for them to change. It's hard for your friends to change with you. Um, but I have an amazing support system. They're all 
very on top of it and very respectful of me and I couldn't be more happy with who I have around me. So the first step with my personal transition was to get on hormones, which was strangely the most scary step I had to take. It just in the back of my mind, I thought I was going to be judged and they were going to tell me no. I just had all these fears, but it was the most simplest process. My um, hormone doctor is amazing and so he just makes me so comfortable anytime I see him. I see him tomorrow actually. So besides that, focus on laser. Laser hair removal is annoyingly um, a huge step of most trans women's journey. So I think those two go hand in hand. A lot of women, um, trans women, have to get surgeries to feel comfortable and you know battle their body dysmorphia. So I transitioned at 24, so I had already gone through male puberty. So I had a prominent brow ridge and I had a heavy jawline and chin and just things that made me really insecure in public places. Like I would wear a hat anywhere I went because I hated my profile. So um, about a year after transitioning medically, I went to a doctor and had FFS, which is called facial feminization surgery. So I've literally had my whole face done. I've had some other augmentations, which it's all superficial and is not necessary, but for my journey, I really needed it. And it has made me so much more confident and happy with who I am. I just never knew I could have done that and I did it and I'm very proud of myself for that. Dating and sex life before transitioning. Um, I was always fearful that I wouldn't be in love, like someone wouldn't love me. So I held off on transitioning for a long time, trying to like date gay men and it just never worked out. And finally I just got the balls no pun intended, to transition and it has definitely <laughs> helped my dating life tremendously. Being able to go on dates with men in public and have just the world view you as who you are is just really freaking amazing. And again with transitioning it boosts your confidence to a level that even if you don't look good, that confidence shines out and the world can see that, you know, people can see that. So it's, it's it, A in that department. <sighs> Early on in the transition, you know, there's a year or two that you kind of just, you're transitioning, you know, and it's a little awkward and it's a little messy. I think for me personally, after my FFS procedures, um, when I got to erase that person, you know, and finally look in the mirror and see who I'm supposed to look like and who I actually am, has definitely felt like the most authentic. That and my name changed. That really helped my confidence a lot. Being able to go to a restaurant and hand over my ID and not really give a crap or sign paperwork, you know, that helps a lot. I know I should be offended by most words, but growing up as a gay kid and then transitioning, you get, you get to hear the gamut of nasty words and it gets to a point where you realize that the words only have power if you give them power. So I've definitely taken back the F word and the T word and even to me I think is endearing. So if you call me that, I'm going to say thank you because I'm not offended by it because I get to give that power. So, no, I'm not offended by any language. I've been blessed in my transition that I've never been harassed in person. I mean, online we get our hate, but that's always misdirected projection from the other person, I feel like. So when someone online messages me really nasty things, I feel bad for them because it's just how they feel about themselves. But nothing in real life, thankfully. So, what's next for me? I'm done with surgeries i want no more surgeries um legally i'm going to change my gender marker soon which has been i know a lot of states it's very easy here in phoenix it's a little bit more um challenging but i'm gonna get it done and then just focus on my happiness you know that's always my goal is just to be as happy as i can be i also would love to i'm an old bitch. she's getting there i think love is the next thing in my um, journey. I focus so much energy into myself and I've learned myself so in depth that I think it's time to share that with another human and get to know that person. So if I had the opportunity to tell my younger self one piece of advice, <laughs> that'd be hard because I have so many because I've made a lot of mistakes. Oof, I'm gonna cry. Just know you're um, loved and you're worthy and you're perfect the way you are. Don't ever doubt that. So the advice I'd like to give to the little boys and girls out there that are going through the same journey is find 
find your tribe find your family you know sometimes that's not blood and there's people around you that will uplift you and love you for who you are and find those people because you're gonna need them um don't be afraid to make mistakes you know and also find who you are at your core you know with social media nowadays you're trying to be other people you don't want to be them you want to be you because that's the best person you can be learn yourself Love yourself, and then let the world love you. I'd love if you followed me on Instagram at Luna Love Saint James. Down below, mm -hmm. click it. <laughs> I feel. Now you forgot the question. You're good. Say it again. Uh. <laughs>